Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My videos are getting shorter. Congratulations, right? Today, we will be doing an oil change for a KTM Super Duke 1290R year model 2018. And I'm just repeating this in case there are illiterate viewers who couldn't have guessed it when they clicked on the video. You're welcome. So what do we need today? We need a motorcycle. Specifically the one I just mentioned. All right, somewhere to put the old oil for temporary holdings until, you know, we dump it down the drain, sell it as Kool-Aid at the local store. You know, the usual. The bike in question only takes about 3.6 liters. That is when you also change the oil filter, which I have never understood why you would change the oil and not the filter at the same time. Never mind. Coming to the filter, High Flow Filtro HF650. Yes, I will be reading it for you so you can, you know, watch porn and only have me in the background. And if you're a lady, that. What was it? Women who want to attract men, they go squeaky. Men who want to attract women go deep. Very wide. Hmm. And then we need some oil. 10W50. 10W50. Okay. I chose Ravenol. This here is a racing four stroke. So it's a little bit more expensive. I could have gone Liqui Molly, the old Castrol. But I thought, well, Ravenol, they gave me a good price and the products are even specified by KTM. So here we go. And that's not to say Castro and Liqui Moly isn't bad. I mean, Castro. Okay, Castro is great if you change your oil frequently, like I did on the 1190. That bike at 30,000 had no valve ca valve chatter, nothing compared to other bikes in similar condition. So changing your oil frequently is beneficial. So the engine takes 3.6 liters. I like to put in just a tot of this oil additive and all it is it adds a little bit of molybdenum disulfate just a little bit you don't have to put everything in i just put a tot into it peace of mind and if only a tot so it doesn't impact the detergent package in this although does it work i don't know i'll just do it because i still have it around brake cleaner my go-to, we will be cleaning the oil screens as well as anything around the, uh, how do we say, the oil enclosures. Make sure that everything is nice and clean when you put it back together. Uh, torque wrench, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, 10 newton meters, although by hand, you can't over tighten that stuff. Um, gloves, very important. Old oil causes cancer. So does milk, soy milk. Um, your vibrator or dildo if it's not made to european standards so ladies um, don't buy from the side of the road you best is buy it from a retiring lady of the night at least you know all the toxins have leached out over the use oh boy and here i thought i could get a video that's relatively clean also don't buy wooden ones because of splinters and avoid balsa wood if you can uh, tooling wise we will only need one of these and this one to get the bolts off that's it optional accessories which might be required because this is a ktm motor is aluminum foil and i'll show you why now all right so this is your baby's bottom we have to loosen this this is an oil drain screen filter this is the main filter, two bolts, and there's a third one. You may notice that um, this one's okay, and this one is precariously over the hot exhaust. So when you open this, where do you think the oil is going to splash to? Is it going to go forward and into the pan without making a mess? Or is it going to go uh, splash every fucking which way, creating a huge bloody mess which this will not catch? 
If your answer was for the latter, congratulations, you have a double-digit IQ, just like me. Let's proceed. We're going to put some aluminum foil here so everything can waterfall gently into the oil catch pan. First order of business, make sure the bike is warm. Um, no, that's not an LGBTQ reference. I mean, the oil is relatively warmed up. And once that is done, not too hot though, just, you know, Goldilocks, just right. We open this so there's no air lock. And we're going to start opening this first, then the pen in the arse in the back, using hefty, hefty, hefty aluminum paper. And once it's drained, then we do the filter, and we will continue from there onwards. So let's do that. Now, these screens are quite long, so you can control this to a certain degree so it doesn't splash all over the place. Here we go. Yeah, gently, gently. For those of you asking, this oil is 500 kilometers old. <laughs> yes, why are we changing it? Because the previous yeah. owner didn't exactly service it a lot. So I took it on extended long travel to make sure this oil cleaned the engine and now we're putting the proper stuff in. According to the shop that sold it to me, this is Liqui Molly. He didn't specify what viscosity grade. And you know, when they don't <laughs> supply that information, that just makes me worried. Also, this is an incredibly uh, high strung engine. So this is not driven around Sundays leisurely. This engine is punished, which means the oil will degrade faster. So, this thing gets serviced every 15,000. It'll get serviced every 5,000 by me. Yeah, that's how much stress I need to push into her. Come on, there we go. Oh. Still more to go. I know, girl. Come on. Looks like me after a hangover. Same sort of color as well, or the Jägermeister I drink and imbibe, because I drink with accountants. Here we go. Okay, this is the oil screen, and it is incredibly fucking hot. <clears throat> and the thing we have to look for, focus your fuck, there, there, that's a magnet. And it catches all the debris. And the fact that there is debris when this thing was supposed to have an oil change done means that the dealer who did it, yeah, did a half-assed job. So, this is the first screen. So, look at that. Just focus, please. I'm going to use brake cleaner to clean that off and I'll show you what it should look like. There, that's what it's supposed to look like. Nice and shiny. Same with the other one. The front one had the most shavings. The back one was tch, spotless. There's actually, I actually found a bit of gasket material. <laughs> and shaving wise, uh, a couple. There are no big chunks, it's minor. Oh, well, let's just um, ignore this one, right? Nah, it's not bad. The thing that does worry me, they said they changed the oil, and this engine's service history was zero, 5,000 kilometers service, nothing until 15,000. Now the dealer made a service, but judging that there's still gasket material on these screens, and the magnets weren't 100% clean, I'm guessing the dealer didn't do a proper job. So, that's where I come in. And if after 10,000 kilometers, that's all the shavings, I'm happy with that. Oh girl, you're not going to have much more shavings. I can guarantee you that with the amount of quality stuff I'm going to put in you. I'm going to pump you full of the good stuff. I mean, you will just be begging. Focus. Right, we put these things back. You will put oil. 
on all the oil rings and you will inspect them. And then you will talk them down to spec. Not like the idiot who tightened mine because I had to get out the big tool kit to crack them loose. But don't forget, the bike is also now on the center stand or the paddock stand. I like to just take it down halfway so it tilts and all the remaining oil comes out. And while it's in that position, we'll take out the filter because the filter will also be able to slide out easier. Oh, to get the filter out, I keep forgetting tools. Get a long nose plier. I'll show you how to use it now. Or a um, snap ring plier. You have no idea how thankful I am that for once I'm not making a complete mess with one of these LC8 motors. Yeah. All right, so we got to pull this fucker out. Just obviously snap ring pliers would be better, but you just apply pressure on each end and there you go. And obviously there'll be more oil coming out. So we're not going to make a mess. Or at least you will not do that. And as you can see, there's still a couple more drops from each end. But it has stopped, so what we're going to do, we're going to loop these up, put them in in the meantime, and then the filter should have stopped dribbling. Hardly anything in, but there is darkness. The rubber end goes in first. All right, and we are now going to take a lymph-free cloth. Just give that a quick wipe in there, because it can happen that there are contaminants. Don't worry, the cloth you can use to start your barbecue at a later stage. Now, that's absolutely perfect, spotless, I'm happy with that. Make sure everything is clean on the outside. Put the filter in, put a bit of oil on all the rubber pieces, including the O-ring, inspect it for damage, else you will have to replace it. Now, if you treat these things right, they'll last forever. Speaking of, if you have trouble getting this cap off, just twist it so you got a little lip and then you can pull it back. If it's really not coming off, sorry man, put pressure and really rip it because someone then forgot to oil the o-ring before installing it. So let's do that. And now we come back to the Austrian engineers. Firstly, the filler cap, make sure that o-ring is okay, blast it with some brake cleaner to get rid of any contaminants, then give it a little oil film so it's easier to open and close again. And uh, well, this contraption is mandatory because the fill port is at such an awkward angle. If you had castrol oil, those got those little nozzles which fit in there and you can just squeeze it in. For everyone else, we have to make you with some sort of fill, uh, well, funnel attachment. And I know Liqui Molly, you guys tried, but this is too big. Also, kudos on the oil color. I mean, wow. Talk about it. If you can run a black light over her now and you can see all the stay. I, we are going to fill this engine to 3 liters according to the Haynes manual. And we're just going to start her up quickly, make sure everything is circulated, and then we will go all the way to. 3.6 liters. That's 3.6 liters. Exactly. And that's what it looks like. Now, obviously, you can only measure this when the bike is level and upright, not on the side stand. Ah. So, you will either learn to balance your bike, which is a great exercise, just, you know, keep it upright, touch it with two fingers and walk around it. Just touching it with two fingers. It's a great exercise. Or you will need a friend to help you with this. And unfortunately, well, KTM owners, they don't have any friends except the mechanics who fix their bike when they inevitably break down. And I know I'm already getting a lot of hate mail for that. And I count myself also a KTM owner now, so I'm dissing myself. And I'm proud to do so, because nobody wants to be around me anyway. Right. Gentlemen, that is it. A very important thing to do to your motorcycle, if 
if it's just coming out of winter rest for summer, or you're abusive with it, or you just want to feel better and know that you have done a proper job and the dealer hasn't. Okay. Well, you're welcome. What's up next? Um, well, hopefully my videos are getting shorter, so...